Yeah, <laughs> no, it's a bit late. Thanks for raising this. Um, so I was, we, we are here now. I just talk about IAM, now we talk about network security, uh, backups, encryption. And the last uh, important areas is auditing. So that one is extremely important. By default, CloudTrail Trail is not enabled. That means essentially that your, anything that happened in your AWS account is not being logged. So you don't have the event after 90 days. So you can see them from the console up to 90 days backward. So if you have like a security breach on your AWS account and it happened 100 days ago, you're going to be blind and not being able to see anything. So it's important to enable a cloud trail trail um, in your account. So these are the uh, essential stuff uh, I'm looking at for a quick scan. Uh, and again, that takes like maybe a couple of hours to, to complete. Depend on the amount of uh, resources, of course. Now, as I said earlier, uh, this was a quick scan. If you want to do a more like detailed uh, review, uh, so these are some other areas to consider in addition to what I just showed for the quick scan. Sorry, I, I hear some, some noise in the background. Uh, can you, can everyone put himself on mute or if you, uh, if you don't have any question at this stage? Maybe I can trigger it. Okay, it's better. Um, so what you need to do in addition to the quick scan review. So if I need to do a more in-depth review, I'm going to look into details, uh, the IAM policies. Okay, so uh, you're going to look um, at the different uh, permissions assigned to different users. Are there any two permissive policies? Um, like, is there any policies with any services, any action, any resources? So yeah, but that takes a lot more time than the quick scan, um, but that also can also be something we want to look into. So the IAM policies, um, is there any secrets in the, the code which is not managed? So are there any hard-coded secrets um, or secrets in an environment variable? So what I mean by secret typically is the password that you use to um, connect to the database. Is, um, is it embedded in the code or are you using something more secure like AWS secret manager or these kind of services? Um, then uh, in terms of key management, what kind of key are you using for uh, encrypting your data? Do you use the generic key provided by AWS, but you don't need to manage anything, or you have uh, your own keys using AWS uh, KMS, so key management service. And if you have your own keys, you are a SaaS provider, multi-tenant, uh, you may want to use different keys for different tenants. So you know ten the tenant A has this data encrypted with a different key from tenant B, which is more secure. Uh, it's something we talked about last time, uh, the last month's presentation I gave about the multi-tenancy. In terms of monitoring, um, so, okay, you have your uh, CloudTrail uh, enabled. So the CloudTrail trail, as I mentioned earlier during the quick scan, um, how, what are you doing with these logs? Are you creating any alerts? Are you monitoring it? Are you streaming to CloudWatch? So, um, yeah, if I do a more detailed review, I'm looking at if there is any alerting in place. So, for example, um, for many customers, I create some alerts for root login. So, we say earlier that root login should not be done for everyday basis. So, if that happens, there should be some alert. So alert can be sent by email or Telegram, Slack, whatever you want. Um, is there anything to detect um, like configuration issues, uh, like compliance uh, configuration issues? So if, uh, for example, uh, there is a, a, an EC2 volume on EBS, which is not encrypted, or if someone changed the encryption settings, is there any uh, detection for that. So that can be done with AWS config. Uh, system manager can also help for that. 
So are you using these tools? And very important, and sometimes this one is, uh, is not used appropriately. It's um, how are you using your availability zones for disaster recovery? So each region in AWS has two or more availability zone. Um, so are you making use of them? Or are you putting everything in one availability zone? So how is it implemented? Also, I see situations where uh, like customers will put like the front end in the availability zone one, the, the application in web availability zone two, and the database in web availability zone three. And they, they don't want to have multiple AZ, okay? They don't need high availability. But what they're doing is so wrong because if any of the three AZ fails, the whole application is not working. Okay, so if you, you need, if you use only one availability zone, you need to put everything in the same and don't spread it across AZ. Uh, it's common sense, but sometimes uh, this is overlooked um, and it uh, can be yeah, a bit tricky to, to, to modify this when it's done. So that's for the detailed uh, review. Now, um, okay. That was for a single account. If you have, uh, uh, if you need to do a review for multiple accounts, um, so you may need to review the different accounts one by one, especially the most critical ones. But also, if the the organization is dealing with multiple accounts, there are things, additional things you may want to check. These areas are AWS organization, so the service that allows to manage multiple accounts. Is it enabled? Um, are you using organization units and how are you structuring this organization unit? So OUs is uh, like some areas where you can put different child accounts. So how are you structuring this? Uh, you can do it by project, by business, or by different type of environment. So usually we have development, test, acceptance, production. Are you segregating those in different accounts and maybe you're using different OUs for that? So yeah, if you need to review multi-account, uh, it's a good idea to look at this and see uh, if that makes sense or not. Um, I am, so uh, when you use multiple accounts with organization, uh, we can use service control policies to limit the, the access across all of our AWS accounts, okay? Um, so if you want to limit what, other, what the other accounts can do, you can use what we call SCPs. So even the root user of a specific account will be limited by SCP. So you can prevent the root user, which is normally a super user, for, from doing um, anything using the service name SCP. So it's like centralized manage IM from the central AWS organization account. Um, in terms of auditing, so we say earlier that it's important to have cloud trail trail enable everywhere. However, if you have an organization with multiple accounts, uh, it's a, a good idea to have a central cloud trail. So you're going to get all the audit logs from all the AWS accounts in one secure dedicated AWS account. So the idea is to centralize everything. Um, also, if you use multi accounts, there are a lot of sec shared security services that can make sense. So I'm not going to detail them, but commonly used is AWS Security Hub, AWS Graduate. Um, so if you have like a complex organization with many accounts, it's a good idea to have a dedicated um, AWS security account where you put the central cloud trail and you can put the other AWS security services there. Okay, so if I do a security review, I'm checking if this thing is exists or not. And also for network, uh, security. Um, so again, if you have a complex organization, you use a lot of services that run inside VPC. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good idea to have all the traffic going to the internet, going through a central AWS account that we use as a transit gateway. So this way we can screen every outgoing and incoming traffic from the internet. So any account that needs to communicate to the internet is going to through uh, to go through one dedicated AWS account for that. So does this thing exist? Yes or not? That's something we can uh, look at. 
So again, these are like uh, key areas, but are important to focus in my opinion. Um, there, there are other things as well. It's not an exhaustive list here. 